Hello everyone, this is the Great Pumpkin speaking and welcome to this new video of Dragon Fable. A question that I get asked often is where to find particular items to upgrade your character. Most recently, Wilker Pereira has actually asked me in the comments where to find good items for his character. So that's what we're gonna do right now. However, the issue with this is that I actually don't know anything about your character. I don't know, do you own a dragon amulet? Do you have access to dragon coins? Are you level 40 or level 90? So how I'm gonna solve this is to actually show you a number of items that I feel scale well based on your level, as well as some of the better items available right now. So first thing to mention right now is that the, uh, the stats considered the most beneficial right now is actually all resist. What this does is actually reduce damage that you receive from each of the various elements. Although what this does as well is actually reduce the healing that you receive from, you know, your healing skill basically. But usually you're better off actually preventing your damage in the first place than actually healing it. So, however, the tricky thing about that is that uh, it's actually not written on the item itself what its resistance are. For instance, if I unequip the Fierce Dragonlord Helm here, well, you'll see that my all resist went down to 11 as opposed to 21. So pretty much the only way to know about that is to actually check on the Dragon Fable forum with, with what their all resist rating is. So, uh, <clears throat> I'll put a few links, by the way, to actually help you with these. But let's get started, shall we? We'll start off with helmets. The first one that we'll look at is actually the Fierce Dragonlord Helmet, which I'm wearing right now. It's available back in Book 2, in Dragon Grasp, which is located here and you can only access as a Dragon Amulet holder. You will also need some Dragon Coin for this. Do keep in mind that this square is a little wonky, <laughs> always get stuck in it. So we go to the Weapon Shop here, I'll talk to Renny and go to the DC Shop. Now you'll see various versions of the Spheres Dragonlord Helmet, all with different all resist, I suppose. So by buying the highest level version, well, you'll get about 10 of all resist as well as fairly decent stats, so that's pretty good. So for the next one, we'll actually be heading over to Book 3 within the Void Ship in order to find the Void Rift cover. To do that, we need to talk to Tomix. Go to the Void Ship, board the ship, select the Void Ship option, reboard again, go to the left, head over here, and go to this little glowing door there, which is Yashta's cabin. So by talking to him, you can actually do a quest here, which will reward you the Void Ref cover, which has an all resist of 3. It's available in various uh, levels, although it might take you a while to actually get them. It's another Dragon Amulet item, unfortunately. So for the next one, we're going to be heading back to Book 2 and head over to the Necropolis. So here, once you've unlocked both the Paladin and Necromancer class, and if I'm not mistaken, I've managed to train them to maximum level, you can get access to the Death Knight class, which will lead you to the Tomb of Sir Malefact. Here you'll get access to a bunch of uh, Death Knight items, among others, the Death Knight Blade, Helm, and so on. The item that I wanted to focus your attention on was the Death Knight Helmet, which is a level 40 helmet. This is a non-DA item, which is also available in both uh, Dragon Amulet version, as well as non-DA, available here. You also get access to Zeklam items, which are the equivalent of the Dragon Amulet one, which are basically the same items for Dragon Coin, basically. So the item I wanted to talk about that you can get upgraded fairly easily for a bunch of Umbral Essence, as well as the original Dread Death Knight helmet, is the uh, uh, not the Unhallowed, the Shadow Death Knight Helmet, which will allow you to get access to an item that will scale pretty well with your level, all the way from 40 to 80, so that's pretty good. Next, we're going to be talking about capes. 
the best cape available right now, I feel like, is actually the Necro Paragon cape, which I'm wearing right now, actually. This is available from the Inn at the Edge of Time, which is available through this portal here in Book 3. Most of the best items available in the game right now are actually obtained from this particular challenge. So, let's have a look here. So, in order to actually get this item, well, you'll, uh, you'll actually need to uh, finish uh, the uh, Blood Moon challenge that is available here. Most or more specifically, you need to defeat the Jack Crescent and the Doom Guitar, as well as perform a number of random Blood Moon challenge. By doing that, you'll get access to the Necro Paragon Cape right here. There's also an alternative for this, which is available in the Otherworldly Creatures challenge. More specifically, the Groundhog Dave, which by finishing it will reward you with Groundhog Dave's ca uh, wings, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And you'll also need to do the big and small challenge to actually get it. So, for non DA older, you can actually get access to the Ica Backguard. So, this is obtained by going on the map proper and actually going to Ica Village right here. And talking to this weird looking lady over here. By doing your quest, you get access to the Neverglades as well as the deeper and deepest Neverglades. Each of those versions actually rewards a version of the Ica Backguard, which is a pretty good item overall. And finally, if you really can't find anything uh, to use uh, for your back item, well, you can actually use the Dead Knight Cloak as well as was the case from the previous items. Dead Knight items are actually pretty good and scale well for your level, so you can get them for pretty much every accessories. Next, we're gonna talk about rings. And the one that we're looking for is actually here at the challenge board at the Inn at the Edge of Time. So, the best ring available right now, I believe, is the Tentacle of Dominion, which is obtained from defeating Kato's Sig Simulacrum, as well as the Dominion Challenge. So by doing that, you'll get access to the Tentacle of Dominion, which is a ring with 5 all resist, which is actually pretty darn good. And then, on the off chance that you actually don't have a Dragon Amulet, you can still uh, fall back on the Dead Knight items, which in this case is the Shadow Dead Knight Circlet. Next, we're gonna talk about necklaces. So here we are at the end at the edge of time, and we're actually looking right now at the Primordial Upgrades, where you'll actually find the Squirrel Tentacle. So by defeating Skir Uriade Totep, <laughs> kind of a tongue twister there, and doing the Primordial Challenge, well, you'll get access to the Squirrel Tentacle here, which is a necklace that has a 5 all resistance, which is pretty darn good. And finally, if the challenge proves a little too difficult, well, you can always fall back to the Dead Knight Amulet. So next, we're gonna talk about belts. The best belt available right now, to my knowledge, is actually Lerorilla's Mane, which is available here on the Otherworldly Creatures Challenge. It's obtained by defeating Leorilla the Proud, as well as the Weird Duo. So by doing that, you get access to the upgrades here, which will give you access to Leorilla's main belt. It doesn't have all resist, but it has overall good stats and resistance. Next, there's also the Void Woven Belt, which is available by going back to the Void Ship in Book 3. So by going there, you can head over here. Basically the same route we took to go to Reyashta. But we head over through here, down in the basement, over here. And talk to Ayn, who will give you a quest here, which is actually the Crystoidator version 4. 
This will give you access to the Void Woven Belt, only available for the Dragon Amulet Holder if memory serves. It also had some old resist, so could also be useful. And finally, as is customary, if you do happen to uh, not have a Dragon Amulet or have trouble with the challenge, well, you can actually get the Death Knight Belt, which will serve you well. Next, we're gonna talk about Trinket. So, for Trinkets, you need to head over to Book 3 here, travel the map, and head over to Hunter's Paradise. There, you can actually go here within the inn proper, go through the back here, and talk to this guy here by sitting down. So by going to his shop, you'll get access to a number of items, among others the Spiked Leather Gauntlet, which will give you some pretty neat stats. It's obtained by combining it with an Unlucky Doom Essence as well as a Leather Power Fist, which in turn will actually require you to get other things, among others the Troglomite Eye and Leather Gauntlets, the Leather Gauntlets which requires Gold Cabot Tail, and the Leather Gloves which require Rodu Claw. So how do you get those items actually? Well, it's actually here in Hunter's Paradise. So you can actually go over here and talk to the lady here. So by talking to her, you can ask for jobs and go hunt various animals here to get the materials that you need. The next trinket I want to talk about is a useful trinket called the Runestone, which I've personally demonstrated a number of times on this channel. In order to access it, we can go to the story and head over to the Shears. Do note that this item is Dragon Amulet only. There aren't a lot of trinkets available for non the, the Dragon Amulet holders, but I think I've managed to find one, which we'll see later. So by going here, we can go see Sir Leon. Go to the quest, and by doing the destruction quest, well, we'll get access to a version of the runestone, which will allow you to basically uh, use a, a special move that will deal a lot of damage and apply a dot to the enemy. Now, if you're a dragon amulet holder, well, the spike gauntlet and runestone will serve you well, as well as pretty much anything that will put up a shield or blind someone. Although usually people prefer the elemental unity trinket, which is available by buying dragon, uh, a bundle of dragon coins and then being upgraded by the black market moglin. Or for a non-dragon amulet holder, well, I'm not too sure about this one, but apparently there's a new one that was released that's not too bad. So by going here in Falcon Reach and talking to Yuanta, we can get access to the Malurus War, which is the last war that was available in the game as the time of this recording. So by doing the boss fight, you will fight Sinosense, which will reward you with a version of Yuanta's Blaster on charge. Apparently, the lowest level version of it is actually available for non-DA holder. So you know, something to keep in mind. Next, we're gonna talk about Bracers, which are wrist, wrist slot items that got released not too long ago. The best one available right now is actually the, uh, uh, how can I say, the Legion Bracer, which is rewarded from defeating the Crawler and Centaur challenge, which is actually the one I'm wearing right now. That, if I'm not mistaken, one to your all resist, as well as the various stats here. Don't expect a lot from Bracers, usually they just add a few stat bonus, not a lot of it. Now, for Bracers, there are a few options available to you as well, but most of them are fairly difficult to obtain, but there is one that is actually available also for non-DA holder. You can get it by talking to Ash here, and if you are far enough ahead on the main quest, you can actually do the Return to Limcrest quest as well as the Apprentice. Return to Limcrest will reward you with Falwin's Lucky Rock, which adds a plus two to your luck stat. The Apprentice does the same thing, except it's Falwin's Disguise Kit, which will add plus two to your charisma. Next, we're gonna talk about Pet. 
The best pet available right now, it seems, is the baby Chimera, which is a level 1 pet that has a number of abilities, among others doing a, a putting up a shield on you for 2 turns, as well as dealing a lot of hits of nature damage and fire damage, while also being able to do a deal a dot. However, this pet is rather tricky to obtain in that it requires you to actually finish pretty much all of the otherworldly creatures challenge. More specifically, you need to finish the Primordials as well as the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Big and Small Challenge. This will allow you to access the Baby Chimera here using the Chunk of Void Radiance and the Core Strapped Egg. Another good choice for pets, if you happen to have a, 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 bit, a fair bit of Dragon Coin, is to actually go here to Cicero's uh, Superstore of Savings and head over to the pet shop here. By going here you get access to the various Fierce Cats, among others the Fierce Dead Arrows Cat and the Fierce Brave Sir Robin Cat. These cats actually he deals uh, their damage twice when they attack and have a chance to do it four times, which can be fairly valuable, among others the Dead Arrows Cat, which works really well with class that debuff darkness resistance. There's also an item that is fairly valuable as far as pets goes, and that is a uh, functions a little different than an actual pet. To get it, you need to go to Book Tree, head over to the story, and go to Sulaneska. I'm gonna use the shortcut to get to Kara. Go down the stairs here, and talk to Marita. If you've gotten far enough, well, you can do the Starcrossed quest, which actually rewards you with Stand the Scan Orb. Stand the Scan Orb is actually a pet that reduces your enemy's resistance to all by 15%, as well as improve your healing on occasion, so it can, can be valuable for some classes. If you're a non-dragon amulet holder, well, finding pets is a little trickier. Still, there are a few that you can use, among others here on Book 2. If we go to Warlick Stent, and head over here to the tent proper, you can find Nytera, the Dragon Mage, and go do a number of quests for her, among others the Rise of the Dragon Mage Saga, which will allow you to access the Test, which is a quest that rewards a number of Fireflies pet. These pets are deal light damage and actually have an ability that actually improves your healing as well. They do decent damage and they're available through a reasonable amount of levels. An alternative to the Fireflies, if you'd like something that's a little more neutral element-wise, is Rummage, which uh, can be obtained by going to Ash in Book 2. Go to the quest, select Colorless, and finish the Live and Let Die quest. This will give you access to the Rummage Shop, who are basically all non-Dragon Amulet, except for the very last one. It basically deals metal damage and has a chance to deal about 5 hit to somebody else. Next, we're going to talk about weapons. Now, the most, uh, how can I say, versatile weapons available right now are actually the Element Sight, which are sold for Dragon Coins during the Dragon Fable Anniversaries, although not always. Like, for instance, right now, I've got the Ancient Dragon Amulet Sight of the Elements, which deal nature damage uh, ba as its base, as well as the Doom Dragon Sight of the Amulet, which deals water damage. By clicking on the orbs on those sites, well, you can actually change the element of your weapon. For instance, by clicking here, I can change my sight's element to darkness, as we'll see right here. Unfortunately, those are tough to obtain. Another of your uh, possibilities is to actually get Doom and Destiny weapons, for which I have a guide already on my channel. I'm not entirely sure where you can find a proper light weapon, but... You can also use the Dead Knight Blade in case you need a proper darkness weapon. Now, one of the more powerful weapons that you can obtain right now that's pretty much elemental neutral is the Necro Paragon Soul Blade, which is available from the Time Torn Matrix in within the Nefarious Challenge. By completing the various Time Torn Matrix, you'll get access to various reagents, which will allow you to be to merge them into the Necro Paragon Soul Blade. So basically, by finishing the huge Time Torn Matrix, 
well, you'll actually get the uh, Time Torn War Blade for sure. If you finish the middle one, you'll get the Time Torn Blade Hilt. And you can also use various shards to get access to it from the small one. What is nice about this weapon is that it deals bacon damage, which means that it's pretty much elementally neutral against everything. It also has 10 of all resists, which is pretty cool. Now, if you are a Dragon Amulet holder and happens to actually be missing a weapon of a particular element, well, there's something you can actually do. And to do that, you need to go to Book 3, to the Void Ship, go to the left, Within the city proper, we're headed for Pelo Village. Right here, go down. Go over there. And go to the Soul Forge. This guy here will actually allow you to build customized weapons, which will allow you to uh, use them with various elements by doing the Acquire the Elemental Spirits quest and obtain a spirit cast. This will send you to a menu to create your own weapon, basically. You can see uh, one of those weapons here with the Soul Forge Dagger. The highest level versions of those weapons deal, as you can see, damage with not a lot of variants, can be of pretty much any element, and has four all resists, which is pretty cool, as well as having pretty great stats overall. Now, an alternative to uh, actually using the Soul Forge is to head to the right here in Raisinman Loss and head over to the card shop. Here, El Yal here will give you access to the shop, which contains a number of Dragon Amulet weapons, among others the King Dirk of Spades, Hearts, Diamond, and Clubs. These will should cover a, a fair number of elements for what you need, most of them at pretty much every 10 levels. There's also a Dragon Coin version of each of those weapons available as well. Now, finding weapons for every single element as a non-Dragon Amulet holder can be tricky, so I can't really help you there. But there is one place that might be able to help you. So by going to Book 1 or 2, you can go to Book 1 here, More Story, and head over to Ravenloss. Here you can talk to Tomix and do a quest for him and head over to the Raven Lost War. Within the Raven Lost War proper, you can talk to him and get access to the War Rewards, which involves the rewards with the various keys that you collect over the storyline. Among others, you can get uh, items of various elements, for instance, uh, like the Void Key here, which is a darkness element weapon, which covers a wide range of level for the most part. So this can be useful if you're looking for a weapon. It won't be particularly powerful, but it will cover most of your base. And I'm afraid that's pretty much it. In case you have a number of su suggestions, particularly for non-Dragon Amulet holders, then feel free to post them here. And I'm afraid that's gonna be it for the time being. Thank you for watching everyone. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, please leave a comment below, and that was the Great Pumpkin. You all have a pleasant time now. Bye-bye!